We'll get started now. So, um, good afternoon everyone. My name is Tiana. I will be facilitating today's sessions. Before we start, to assist us uh, with the knowledge of our audience and perhaps during our talk to cater for you, we have a poll which we you will see now. Um, appreciate uh, very much if you can answer the questions so that um, you know during the sessions we can uh, perhaps um, steering some of the questions and um, to to uh, to your uh, to your uh, knowledge of of gut reports or something. Now a little bit of housekeeping to ensure everything is in order. Can uh, anyone not hear me? Okay, it's just checking to uh, let me confirm a message. Uh, and if you can't hear me, so let um, let us know on, on chat and um, perhaps someone can reach out to you. During the session, it, everyone will be muted to give the presenter more comfort to speak at ease without the interruptions and uh, everyone else can enjoy the clear message. If you have a question during the sessions, please send them to us by the message or chat facility or raise your hand and if we see you, we will attend to you accordingly. Um, we will have a question and answer in the middle of the session for those wanting to raise questions why they are still fresh on their mind halfway through, um, as well as questioning time at the end of the session. Now back to the main agenda uh, for today. We will focus on the topics of the tax agent's view on the ELS versus SBR and presenting today's sessions is John Kiriakidis. Um, a tax practitioner who has been using Gov reports for a couple of years. John has over three decades of experience in this industry and his journey to transitions from filling out paper forms to preparing tax returns on ELS software and now PLS by SBR is the light, uh, the tale that John is going to tell us today. His view on the changes uh, and the impact of technology on his business and clients over the years. Um, and as a registered tax agent uh, with over 30 years experience in tax and accounting, not only John provides service uh, from a public practice, but John also has extensive corporate accounting background. So without further ado, let us now hear from John. I will remove the poll. All right. Good evening, all. My name is John Kiriakidis, and welcome to today's session. Um, I'm a practitioner, and uh, I've got a small practice. So uh, I'm based in the Sunshine Coast, Queensland. So yeah, when Tiana asked me to uh, present what my views are on our SBR and um, what it's doing to our uh, practice. Um, yeah, I said, yeah, I will do it. So, yeah. This is the point of view of uh, what we've done uh, through the uh, journey uh, transitioning from uh, ELS, manual ELS, and then um, now PLS and SBR. That's my detail there. Uh, and my website. So uh, if you've got any uh, questions, you can uh, um, raise them in the question times and we'll uh, answer them uh, best we can. Any technical questions, the uh, we have a team of people, they'll answer them and uh, they'll get back to you in due course if they don't answer them straight away. What is SBR? That's um, you know, uh, SBR is a standard business reporting. It's an initiative that the ATO brought in back in 2010 and uh, made everybody aware of it and uh, got all the uh, programmers and uh, company alike to provide a, uh, a better service or better system. So it's been a long journey for everybody. Now we're uh, seeing the rewards and uh, it's getting close to being fully implemented. We're getting uh, some places a taste of it, but uh, it's, uh, um, it's not fully there yet until uh, probably uh, sometime this year. With the problem we had with the ATO, uh, hopefully it'll get uh, a lot better. Like SBR is built within uh, all the systems, you know, payroll systems, accounting systems, uh, and obviously the lodgement and uh, and uh, uh, 
lodgement programs. This is where GovReport helped me along the way. So I was, uh, I've gone from manual system to an automated system uh, or desktop and now a fully cloud version of the system where I don't have to worry about updates, uh, changes and etc. So that, uh, according to the ATO, well, uh, they're going to get rid of the ELS system uh, around about you know, the latest information that we've received is the 31st of March 2017. PLS is going to come in and take over and which is a lot better service, quicker and uh, smarter way of doing business. Um, at the moment I'm using it and it's a lot better, it's quicker, response time without any uh, glitches or uh, waiting uh, for information, ATO gets it straight away. So yeah, it has been a good journey for us and um, it, it got us uh, where we want. What is the contingency of uh, ELS closing and when is it uh, scheduled uh, to go and what's the last return? Again, according to the ATO and the latest information, FBT returns will not be accepted by ELS. It's all going to be by uh, PLS. So uh, the gateway will shut uh, at this stage, 31st of March. So uh, all the other system uh, returns and uh, they're scheduled to be shut la later on uh, in the year. So uh, you can see uh, the dates. I didn't ask, can everybody see my screen? Yeah, so all the other lodgement will uh, be uh, closing down on those days and P PLS will be fully operational. What is PLS doing for my practice? Well, you know, it's making life easier and a lot better. Um, a lot better for our practice, so uh, easy use and it's all cloud based. Uh, since I went from desktop to cloud, it made my life a lot easier. So I don't, as I said, I don't have to worry about what software I'm using or what uh, version of operating system, LAN, uh, etc. So uh, as long as we've got an internet and we can access you can use any browser. So you can check check all the electronic lodgement via SBR. You know all your accounting, and uh, you trans uh, the transition will uh, will happen uh, to PLS. So it will be uh, smooth as possible. Uh, so far, so good for our uh, our practice. What you need to do is uh, check. You can link with link your software with the uh, ATO, which is um, you know the, all the packages um, like the accounting system, payroll system, lodgement, tax file numbers, and all that. So. Uh, you got to nominate your SBR um, software provider with the ATO. So that's the only way they can talk to uh, your provider. ATO won't talk to anybody unless uh, it. Uh, you've got a uh, software provider. The reason I moved, I uh, put a request out out there. What what the best software is around. I was a desktop uh, um, person. Uh, I like to see it, feel it and uh, I've been using desktop for many years and um, when they told me that I need to, that and support the operating system that I was on, I need to upgrade and um, and the uh, software provider that was having it um, 
caused me a nightmare because we had a uh, land, we had to migrate everything and uh, from one system to another and then you don't know what version uh, you're on uh, on the desktop. So uh, it uh, gave me a bit of a nightmare between uh, one is the version, the LAN, the operating system, etc. So uh, at the end, once we looked around and I felt GovReport well, before I moved to GovReport, I tried it on few lodgement and felt that it was so easy to use, user-friendly, and, um, and um, it made my life easier. So I've moved to BAS and then moved all the uh, tax returns in there. It was easy to... Um, migrate all the clients as well, so uh, the import of them wasn't uh, very difficult. So it's more or less, uh, I've lost nothing. So uh, the only uh, downturn, there is always forcing against, the only downturn, the previous system did have 10 years of um, where you can lodge where GovReport only started around about 2012. That's the only downturn. But having said that, I haven't had many clients that went back uh, to 2002 or three or four. So yeah, so it's uh, it has grown since, yeah. I, uh, I haven't looked back since. And from then, uh, they've uh, showed us other systems within uh, GovReport lodgement and tax system. So they're beyond just one software provider. So uh, they're the total solution now. So I've got all my practice on, uh, on it. All right. Uh, migrating the clients to PLS. So as mentioned, I've moved all my clients uh, from one system to another. It was an easy uh, process and um, we could have done it two ways, get a, you know, get a file from uh, the current system and uh, GovReports will help you or you can import it, there's an import function. But at that time they helped us. Uh, migrate easily or the other is you get a uh, get a file from the ATO and upload it, import it into GovReport. As mentioned you got to select via uh, the SBR the gateway for your lodgement so the ATO can uh, talk to you and um, once it knows you've got the PLS and what type of clients. So we've got individuals and non-individual clients update with the uh, ATO. We can add, uh, we can uh, uh, delete and um, all the business activity statements and tax return and obviously there's other uh, state government tax return uh, uh, returns as well. So you've got the uh, payroll tax so, which is all helpful. So, within GovReport Lodgement, it's got plenty of returns that uh, you can do the total uh, returns that's required to be lodged to the ATO. Pre-filling, you can do it either manually or automatic. So, in 2016, GovReport have introduced and started talking with the ATO to uh, uh, do it all automatic, so that saved a lot of time as well. So you can get client information, you can uh, add or um, add or delete uh, your clients without going to the ATO portal. So and then you get uh, your um, uh, receipt as well. So yeah which I found that was good, good function, uh, time saver. So if you don't like the automated way, you can uh, download the, the file from uh, the ATO and use the prefill 
and uh, load it up into the system. And that saves a lot of time as well. So uh, either way, it um, it saves me and my practice. Like all the returns within the system, you can um, do validation, lodgement, and um, you can save them and uh, lodge one or uh, all, all at once. So yeah, the validation of an engine is pretty good. Sometimes you forget what you've done, the system reminds you, or if you get no errors, that means uh, you've done something right. So uh, I always uh, aim to get it into zero uh, errors. So uh, keeps you uh, keeps you on your toes. So uh, and makes you get better in uh, in the way you do your returns. How do you lodge? Well, you can lodge singly. You can lodge by client family. So if you've got a company trust uh, individual, you can lodge them or you can lodge in bulk. So it just depends how big your practice is. So uh, validation. The best part as well, you can send it before you lodge it, send it to the client for digital signature as well. That's a, a good good thing. So it saves a lot of time waiting for the client to send the hard copy back. With the digital signature verification, it comes back and it saves um, saves a lot of time. Sometimes the client doesn't have a printer, but um, you know the, they find it easy. And some clients find it a little bit difficult because they're not uh, computer savvy. So at the end, you just got to make sure your practice is SBR ready and you just got to have the right system and the right software I suppose to to handle what's required in the coming um, years and the, the ATA journey. So um, now the last five, six years or seven years it's been a long way to get here and now once you start tasting it it, it is really good, so especially um, what I find is tax file number declaration in the payroll if you've got clients, that is a, a good um, a good thing so you don't have to even print them, so often you just send them off without knowing and it says it's lodged, it marks it off and it's great, yeah. You can generate reports, verify, and as I said, digital signature. That's a, you know, if you don't have it, I think it's a, it's the best thing to have. If anybody's worried about um, data management and security, and I believe Tiana will uh, elaborate on uh, that a little bit more, but I believe it's secure. Um, and it's got all the details there, so uh, you know. Far as I'm concerned, I don't know all the lingo, but it's uh, to me it's secure um, as a bank, uh, online banking. So uh, I'm not a techo, so. But since I went to cloud, I know it, it is a um, stress-free. I don't have to worry about. Uh, backup. I don't have to worry about where my system is. If anything happens, well, it's the provider to make sure they've got sufficient backup. Since I've been on GovReport, um, have I had any issues in downtime? Really? No. Very rare. Very rare. And if it is, it's on the weekend. And a lot of time we shouldn't do work on the weekend, but you know, we say that, but uh, we tend to work on weekends. So we'll open it to questions, and if you have any questions, uh, uh, raise them, and uh, let's see what we uh, what we can do. John, I have a question. Um, um, 
when you transition to Google Books, did your clients notice that? Or did yeah, Tian has asked, um, how did my clients feel when I transitioned to GovReport? And did they notice any any um, difference in the systems I'm using? Like all practitioners, once you change system, uh, clients don't really uh, have too concern how the form looks, and um, especially when it's paper. Uh, all they want is what tax return or what refund are they getting. And um, no, really, I, I didn't notice any uh, any uh, difference. Uh, no one's complained about it, and it was a smooth transition. The only thing is, uh, you know, th that you got to keep as well when you move with tax returns. You can't get the history of it. You just got to keep, make sure you keep. Um, um, your old version, your legacy version um, available until or a hard copy of what you have. But what they uh, found is uh, the digital signature that, that uh, when that came on board they uh, loved that because they didn't have to print it or they didn't have to come to my office to sign their return. So they thought that was great. It saves them time and saves time them seeing me so <laughs> so yeah a lot of a lot of work has been done on remote which is makes especially busy people uh, they don't uh, they don't want to schedule time out Okay, John, I have another question from uh, Steve Johnson um, his question is does this mean that we won't need the OSCE for BAS uh, portal or tax agents portal. Um, I'd probably be better to answer that, but um, um, can you handle that or can you, would you be able to assist with that? I'll, or? I'll try, but I, well, I believe the OSCE is required, yes. But uh, far as I'm aware, they have introduced that to eliminate the previous keys they used to give us. And OSCE is going to be a total solution for all government bodies. That's what I understand of it when I did ask the ATO. But yeah, now if you've got any other to add on, Tiana, please go. Okay. Um, at the moment, uh, yes, for BAS agents, probably not so much that you will need the BAS agent, the OSCE for the BAS agents portal, um, as we do do not have the integrated account balance within available within GovReport, uh, still are waiting for the ATO. But um, so I think you still need that to uh, to prepare your reports in the in the, the ATO portal. But otherwise, adding the clients, getting pre-filling, etc., is all already available in GovReport. Yeah, once you start using the system, you won't look back. I haven't. No more questions. Okay, in relation to the data security, I'll probably answer that. I'll, uh, answer any questions if anyone have uh, any um, questions uh, at the end of the session. So we'll come back to that. We we'll just continue on, John. All right. What we like to do now is just show you a few screenshots of the system and what you can do, and um, and we'll go with the rest of the uh, uh, presentation on that direction. So yeah, we'll uh, go from there. So, All right, this is where the channel of SBR versus uh, at the moment with GovReport, it can handle both. But once it uh, finishes, it'll, uh, once you do all your vet validation, this is the screen uh, when you save your uh, return. So I didn't mention, I'm not here to show anybody how to do tax return. It's, uh, it's basically how the system works and uh, what it's done for my practice. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so you can lodge it from here. You can uh, send it to uh, a digital signature or you can save it in draft. So either way, just depends how you do business and um, 
uh, and how your organization is. So my employees, they'll save it, validate it, and then we uh, get it to a certain point and then I review it here. Yeah. What we have here is the um, where you can update your client. So once uh, you put your client in, you can um, this screen here. You can connect to the ATO. So saves you going to the ATO and loading up the client. So from here, once you've got the ABN and tax file number, you can say, okay, I want to load them for activity statement and income tax. If you're a BAS agent, well, you'll only do uh, one. So for a tax agent, you do both or one income tax or if your client does both with you. Yeah, and then you just hit update and you get all the information and then you get a receipt after that, which is a really good uh, function that was introduced by the team at GovReport. This is where I was saying this screen here is you can import all your client either through the ATO uh, file or from other softwares as well. So you can uh, get them all in and import it into GovReport. This is the uh, lovely end of uh, which I like, the uh, pre-fill. That saves a lot of time and a lot of the clients these days don't give you a payment summary or interest. Um, so whatever's in the ATO, it's good. So what will happen is you can do it via file or you can do it uh, fully automated pre-fill. But before you do the pre-fill, you can select the start and create your form and then um, go, go from there. So it is a, it is a very good function that saved me um, doing a return a lot of time, about 15-20 minutes. The other good one is when you've got a rollover, especially when you've got um, uh, schedules, rental, other schedules, uh, business returns, um, all those uh, lovely uh, schedules uh, that we look for, depreciation. Yeah, so you say rollover and it'll uh, bring it from previous year. That's a very good function. Once I forgot to roll over and then I had to do the depreciation again. I nearly finished the return and I forgot to. Uh, so yeah, that was a, a bit of an error on my part, but uh, next time you learn, you won't do it again. Through the system, uh, you can uh, you can email the tax return to clients so you don't have to print them. So years ago they told me um, uh, we're going to be a paperless uh, company when I was in the uh, corporate world. Uh, I still haven't seen it so it's taken many years to get to here. So with GovReport and um, what they've done is made it all paperless. So yeah, you can email without printing to the client and it keeps a log here. You have to set up your email, you use your own email, Gmail, whatever you have as long as uh, it can talk to it, uh, but you got to, that's another lesson for another day. Digital signature, this is uh, very important and that saved me a lot of time with clients, especially when they're on the move or interstate or traveling overseas. So it doesn't matter where they are as long as they've got a browser. Once you've validated, everything's fine. You go into your return where it creates, you can create within GovReports the job. And once it's validated, you can send it to digital signature. So um, once it goes digital signature, you can write whatever notes you like and um, as long as they have an email, it'll get there. And it'll give them, um, they'll get a message to view the document. Once they view the document, 
um, they'll get a one-off password and um, they view they view it and then uh, they sign it electronically either either name or they put their physical signature or they just type their name in so there's an option there so yeah no, it's a great tool with Lodgeman I said it previously you can um, do one or you can do multiple so uh, it just depends how big your practice is and what procedures you got in in place so uh, for my firm we get it to a certain point I do it by I call it family where I've got um, company trust uh, individual and their kids so uh, you can lodge them all at the same time get a receipt so or you can lodge all the clients at the same time or individually. If you run a trust account, uh, this is your EFT reconciliation, which links to the ATO and you get the information back so you can reconcile what you need to reconcile. I've got to admit I don't use this function, so uh, I don't know. I can't give an opinion on it, but um, the function is there. Within um, the office and um, and the job you can um, raise a uh, invoice through time billing or set fees through gov reports or office office uh, practice manager so uh, it just depends how you start where you start in in your business so once you finish you can invoice it and uh, email the invoice to the client so that's the lovely, uh, it's good for practitioners sending the invoice, it's sad for the client. I'll have to pass you on to um, Tiana from here and uh, she'll explain um, more about gov reports and suite of systems. Yes, John, I might have to come back to your screen because um, uh, I thought uh, we'll be sharing the um the the um, the PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, so the yeah. else with all right. So um, currently, Gov reports we not only incorporate the tax and lodgement program, uh, where there um, there is a complete um, all the tax returns form and uh, all the business reporting uh, forms as well. Um, so you can prepare it and uh, and do lodgement, uh, but as well for tax uh, for tax agents, we also have the IM accountant's ledger. Uh, which can also uh, be part of your package and of course all packages will include the office practice manager which is your practice management tool and inbuilt with digital signature. Uh, I am business accounting is also available. It is, it is a simple, um, very basic, uh, I wouldn't say basic, it does have payroll, it does have uh, all the necessity but like I said uh, it is a simple accounting, business accounting software. Uh, we Gov reports currently integrate with all the major accounting software, including Intuit QuickBooks, MyOp, Zero, Reckon, Sage One, Thomson Reuters, One Source. If you, some of you, um, are familiar with it, uh, but it means that you can uh, directly import the 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 activity statements from from this software if it's on cloud. But if it's desktop software, you can up download the the backup file um, for MYOB. Mostly, we accept the Baslink file um, simply because customizations in MYOB can be uh, undetected uh, when you have a backup file. Uh, but like I said, if it's desktop, we accept this um, uh, the the file upload as well as in CSV. Uh, future party integrations, we're looking at the bank feeds into the uh, the business accounting um, software as well as ASIC and trust deed and company formation services which will be coming later sometimes later this year. You want to go to the next slides John? Okay, currently Gov report packages. If you, as a tax agent, you can go for the SAVI practice, which will include all the the, the uh, application that you would uh, require as as a practice as a, a no, as a, a practice. So all the tax return from 2012, including all the tax returns, which also include all the um, the worksheets and the schedules. Uh, and all the VAS agents form, which um, they include the VAS, uh, the activity statements, the PAYG, TPA, TFND, and of course payroll tax to all the states and territories. Um, 
Of course, uh, as a lodgement program, you can also do the amendments and uh, you know, cre or create the beautiful things. That, I mean, the things that a lot of people like about us is that you, for clients that do not use software, you can also create um, reports that can be lodged directly as well. And of course, in that you also have the IAM accountant's uh, ledger, which you can import the trial balance from uh, from uh, from uh, their the client software into it, and they make the adjustments. And uh, of course, pre that which will be preview into the tax returns, and uh, for you to lodge. Um, if your clients don't use the software, you can enter the details and create the reports um, and, and uh, of course, the tax returns. The Office Practice Manager is also part of all the package uh, as well as digital signature. So we also have the, the Savvy Agent, which is uh, more suitable for those tax practice that, wants, that want to continue to use um, uh, their tax uh, their tax software, but using the reports for for all other lodgements, including the the activity statements, the PAYG, and of course taxable payment annual report, all the tax file number declarations, which they 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 do on behalf of their clients. And on the main op on the main package is for those pay uh, tax agents or tax pract uh, or practices that have very limited use uh, or a very limited clients, uh, but uh, you know, there certainly wants to get access. Uh, it's also include the office practice manager and digital signature for you to manage your practice uh, or to start building up your practice and have limited lodgements. And as the the ones the the reports that you need to lodge, you can just simply um, you know pay for the those lodge uh, reports and and lodgements. Currently, as I mentioned, uh, we in terms of the lodgement program, we are currently connected to over 13 government agencies, uh, including the Australian Tax Office. Uh, for all the tax returns as well as, as the uh, the business uh, reporting, as I mentioned in the Bass Agents um, uh, package, and ASIC is ASIC at the moment. We're currently only enable for um, financial reporting, uh, financial reports lodgements. So in other words, listed companies. Um, charity organizations. Having said that, because ASIC has been quite not as responsive as the ATO, so we've at times we've been holding back on this uh, in, uh, for, for lodgements, but if there is really an urgent need, just um, give us a call and let us know. But um, um, because, like I said, ASIC has not invested much in SBR, we're waiting to hear a lot more from them. And if that, that improves, we will release uh, more forms and, of course, the current forms that we currently have in, in ASIC. The common forms that I know uh, many tax agents and bus agents require for A4, uh, change of companies, details, and um, Office holders, etc. Uh, currently, this, uh, these forms, are, you know, these services are not enabled in in in, in Gov reports or ASIC. Um, but when they become available, we will certainly add them on. Um, and like I said, state revenue officers, um, we currently enable for all uh, payroll tax lodgements to all the states and territory revenue officers. And uh, uh, other government other government agencies, when they become an SBR enabled, we will also add them on as they, they uh, become SBR ready. Okay, um, do we have questions from anyone? Okay, so John, I also want to um, to talk about the the software nomination process. Which, uh, if you're using SBR enabled software already, if you're using Gov Reports, which from the poll that we've seen, uh, many of you have already been using um, Gov Reports. So, in terms of the software nomination, if you've already done it, and if you're going from BAS migrating from BAS agents or or go from your current account to expanding to to the more uh, to the savvy practice, then there is not much change in your in terms of requirements, but for those that have not used Gov reports, um, as we are a cloud-based software, you will need to do the ATO software nominations, which uh, basically you can either contact the ATO or do it from your ATO portal. It's a it's a very quick process, a five minute less than five minutes process, but uh, it's uh, you know it will not require the use of OSCE while you're using us, unless you are lodging, you are using Gov reports to lodge the payroll tax, which still require the OSCE upload. And also, I want to also make a note as well because why John was talking about the uh, the options to lodge through um, through SBR from from Gov reports. Um, currently, 
um, individual tax return from 2012 to 2015 in Gov reports is by ELS Gateway. So if you preparing individual tax returns, um, uh, and for those years, for clients with uh, with the, those financial years, then you would need to do, to lodge by ELS. But um, from from 2016 onward, it is by SBR. All other tax return are through SBR channel only. Okay, John, I had a questions from uh, from Steve Johnson. Yes. And his question is that you you mentioned that do you use zero? Did you use zero? And did you I'll test with him well there? I've used Xero, I've used QuickBooks, I've used Myop, but I was for the last 20 years using Myop. I've always been a Myop supporter, but um, yeah. So once I saw fully cloud, um, it um, it worked for me. Yeah, I've used various system, and it does link. Um, to those systems, um, Gov report does link without any issues. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Any other questions? Okay. It looks like we all set. Um, John, do you ha do you have other uh, um, anything else that you want to cover? Um, no, I've, I, I believe I've covered everything uh, that we needed intended, intend to and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm just coming from the uh, side of what our business, uh, what GovReport done to our business and how we've moved smoothly and efficiently. Have I uh, looked back? backing up, uh, is it the right file, are you on the right version? No, I don't, I haven't looked back. So you do have that uh, issue of the short-term legacy and which uh, from year to year, but once you're fully transitioned and working, it's, uh, you know, early days is always an issue with any system. So. Um, so I, I believe, you know, the, being on GovReport the past three years, you know, the first year or so because of uh, jumping from one system to another, what, where the history is um, of that client, if we don't keep the, uh, uh, the hard copy, go back to the legacy copy uh, of the system, if you have it. And because XP, they wiped it off, and you know, a lot of my information was gone anyway. So uh, XP is dead and buried now, so it's not working. So this is where I don't have to worry about operating systems. So whatever the latest, it's when we uh, decide to change systems, and uh, the Gov Report works with any uh, uh, browser and mobiles and. Uh, iPads, whatever. Yeah. John, I have another question from um, AC Annie, and her question is: Is I am business accounting for use for your own business, or it can be used for clients' accounts as well? Do it's for both. Know? It's for both. Um, I am uh, Ledger. It's for clients and uh, you've got IM business which uh, can be set for your practice and it will be fully integrated. Um, so at the moment I use IM uh, uh, Ledger and that uh, for my small clients it's a pretty good tool to have. So it's all in one place um, and you get as a tax agent, you get the uh, financial uh, statutory reports as well. So, a lot of system unless you buy a dedicated system, they don't have it. So, uh, to answer the question, yeah, you can use for practice and it's for your clients as well. So, if you put your clients on uh, GovReport Ledger, 
and then they want to convert and want to use it, you can give them access and they have the full version. So you don't have to do any changes, everything's set up, So, uh, which is uh, a good thing as well. So they can convert from Ledger to uh, a fully paid uh, service. They have to pay for that. Ledger comes part of the package of uh, Savvy Practice. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, this session has been recorded for those that, um, you know, if you believe that you have missed anything, um, you can, um, you know, revisit this on on Gary Report's website, uh, which will be listed on our uh, webinars calendar. Uh, but if you have any other questions uh, along the way or uh, out of these sessions, uh, outside of, this, outside of um, you know, when we're off, um, please do send a, a let us know or send us an email or uh, on so forth. Now, um, yeah, any other questions before we we uh, we finish off uh, as well? So I guess we cover almost everything, John. What well, the question I have? Um, data security, if you can, um, before we uh, say goodbye, mm -hmm. and a lot of it, you know, that was my original concern. Uh, where does the data sit, and um, is it secure? Okay. So that, that was my issue uh, at the early days. Yeah, and I think we, so. we cover that initially. Our, our servers um, currently, we, we, not currently, will only be in Australia. Um, at the moment it is sitting in Sydney and Melbourne um, and it's basically because it's, it's in the early days when we start developing uh, the software and I believe that time um, the government, Australian government, not just the ATO, were concerned, quite concerned about financial um, uh, data being held offshore and so for that reason our server has always been in Australia and I think it's our policies that it will continue that way. Now having said that, in terms of our system uh, implementations, we um, the data that you have entered into Gov reports, all sensitive data are encrypted, and uh, of course, will um, you know it's uh, once it's been lodged, it's basically we only kept the image of the the reports, the being the data, the the information that has been lodged, but not actual the physical data. This is basically to ensure that we have um, you know we cover ourselves and people cannot use it unless you know like in ter terms of hacking and so forth, it's not easily uh, penetrate and and use data that we have on the system because no data is kept on that. Um, the other things that you also um, uh, if you you know if you also once in terms of uh, accounts being hacked or something like that um, uh, phishing uh, activities um, we do you know like I said most because it is an online at the end of the day it is an online service and at times you know where you save your um, you know browser do save your password and people do hack into the system online etc in our system uh, we do have two-factor or three-factor authentications where you can add additional layer of security. I think a lot of people, it has always been, it has been there for a long, long time, but most people are not aware of it. You can certainly go into your account settings. If you have an account with us, you go, can go into your account settings, set up um, ex extra layer of security. So in other words, you know, when you log in, just the username and password, and we have another layer of security where possibly questions, um, questions and or more password that depending on how you set it up. So that can also be of um, be um, you know implement within your account as well. So I hope I have answered your questions John or Yes it's it's uh, it's safer than my lane. <laughs> yeah. I so don't have to back do, up. Yeah and we do back up you know on a not only more than just daily, it's basically based on the hours, etc. As, as well. So this is to ensure that we don't lose data, and we do have backup servers where you know one server. So it's it's basically the you know the norm that in terms of handling uh, financial data of clients. Okay. Through development and uh, improvement for Gov reports and your suite of systems. Are you looking at time frame to upgrade, uh, enhance, and improve your systems over the coming months, years? 
Uh, definitely. Um, um, at the moment, nothing is, um, you know, uh, staying, you know, like the same. Uh, as you probably can, you know, have seen over the past couple of years, a lot of new features have been added. We uh, we are at the level at the point where it's it's um, you know it's quite stabilized at the moment, but where there's more features going into Office Practice Manager. As you know, initially we built the, the lodgement program and you start using the, uh, the reports and lodgement program. And then we, imp then we introduce the Office Practice Manager. At the moment, Office Practice Manager, even though it's, in, it's integrated seamlessly into GAP reports, but it still has its own dashboard. So going forward, um, Possibly late this later this year, or early next year, um, the office the features of Office Practice Manager will be more of the front line. So when you you know create a client, when you add a new client, basically the workflow um, that goes through before the lodgement. So you know all of these can be will be more front end. Um, also, there you know it would not be a major major drastically changes as you. Um, other uh, other implementation that we will introduce along the way, but we will for those that are currently using the reports. It um, you will be notified when we introduce those um, those changes. And and I know as I mentioned earlier, the integrated account balance has been the major uh, request that we have been asked uh, for, not only for tax agents but also for BAS agents as well. So like I said, we are awaiting for ATO. Um, you know. Uh, uh, implementations or into productions, and when when that becomes available, I think uh, at that point um, uh, users of Go reports or you know SBI enable so we will have less reliance on the ATO portal, and I, I hope that will be you know that is our ultimate goal is that um, you know the system that you you work for on your clients and in your practice uh, should not should not be relying on other system where um, yeah, it's it's just inconvenient mm -hmm. at the moment, and I know in the past couple of, especially the past two months, we had two major breakdown from the ATO um, system where it did affect mm -hmm. the performance of our system. Now, having said that, you still can prepare and uh, prepare the reports within Gov reports, um, and also you know manage working, uh, you know continue on working. The lodgement process has been um, affected. Is that likely to continue from the ATO? It's hard to say at this stage because we don't know what really the ac the architect of our ATO and how that is implemented. But we believe in like anything, as John was uh, saying earlier, um, any new system is likely to have some sort of you know like uh, initial uh, initial inertia or you know implementation um, uh, you know um, smooth you know like implementations uh, issues that they they would have but gradually yeah, I would I believe it was better it will be better um, I think in the early days when we we had this I mean SBI has we've been around since 2010 in terms of lodgement we never had that as many issues as we have in the last two months um, and that included two major uh, breakdown from the AGO. But like I said, it is early days um, and uh, we expect some sort of hiccups, but it will get better. Thank you, Tiana. That was a great answer. I have no more questions. Thank you all. Thank you for having me and uh, have a good evening. Thank you.